Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Queen Elizabeth, A Day in Her Life. Queen Mary always seems like a popular royal, and I've done a couple of videos about her, and I decided it was time to do another one. So today we're going to see the relationship between Mary and her mother, who was also named Mary. They had a close relationship, and I can't wait to find out more about them. But Princess May was born on the month of May, granting her mother's wish that she be born in the lovely month of May. <laughs> so there was a concern about the birth of Mary because Mary's mother, Mary Adelaide, was a large woman. She was 33 at the time, and during that time period, it was dangerous to have a child. So a public announcement was made once that May, later to be known as Queen Mary, and more than a thousand people went to Kensington Palace to write down their names of, for congratulations. Prince Tech, who was May's father, wasn't as well known in London, but had a lot of friends who were among the limited circle of rich persons. So Mary had a way with people, and they loved her appearance and her cheer cheerful manner. Mary loved May from the start. She wrote to her husband's parents, I have indeed much to be thankful for, lying here with baby in her cradle by me. Mary would always call May my Mayflower, or May because of the month she was born in. Six months after May's birth, her parents were asked to dine and spend the night at Windsor Castle. When Queen Victoria saw Mary, she said, She is, alas, grown and enormous, and never recovered her strength. The Queen told this to her cousin Berlin, but they are very happy together, and the baby had a cold and couldn't come. So two weeks later, they returned to the castle with the baby, and Queen Victoria wrote about May that she was a dear, sprightly little thing, but not fine or remarkably handsome child, but I'm sure she'll be pretty. Queen Victoria had to take another dig at May's mother by writing, It's a real pleasure to see dear Mary now. She is so bright and happy, and also her fine qualities come out so to such advantage now that she is happy, but her size is fearful. It is really a misfortune. Queen Victoria, she was a tiny person, so she felt that anyone who was larger was like oppressive to her. Now we'll learn about Princess Mary, Adelaide, and her weight. So Princess Mary was always large, and she remained unmarried for a while, and for a time it seemed like she would never marry. Then in April of 1866, Princess Mar Mary accepted Prince Tech's offer of marriage. Princess Mary's sisters said that their courtship was an incredibly short one. Needless to say, her mother was happy for the engagement. May's mother was overweight, but she was proud and an intelligent girl, and she was nice-looking. She was tall, had ash-blonde hair, with a wave in it. She had dark blue eyes and a creamy complexion and beautiful teeth. When she was 24, the American ministers at the court of St. James thought that this very fat, very thick-set, and very proud young lady must weigh about 250 pounds. Young officers who could steer the Princess of Adelaide th through a complicated dance were admired. And one time at the great ball at Orleans House, Twickenham Princess Mary was dancing the Lancers with the Comte de Paris as a partner when they collided with another girl and knocked her down on her back. So Princess Mary of Adelaide, she was fond of clothes and jewelry, and I guess that's where Queen Mary got her love of jewelry from. Even though she was overweight, she had quick and graceful movements. She also had charm and could make fun of her size. And according to the book Queen Mary by James Pope Pennessy, it was said that no member of the royal family could wave so valiantly from a carriage, and in any royal procession, she was certain to the longest and the loudest of cheers from the crowd. Children loved her because she was easygoing and high-spirited and generous. Uh, Princess Mary's husband, the Prince of Tech, didn't have any money when Princess Mary married him. He was handsome and he was tall, well-built and elegant. He had a kind eyes and a pleasant and kind expression. He was also nice and friendly and a gentleman. Later in their marriage, though, he wished he had married an English North Country heiress who made 80,000 pounds a year instead of Princess Mary, but it was his idea to pursue her in the first place. Princess May. When she was seven years old, Princess May was very observant and had a photographic memory. Princess May's childhood didn't include a lot of visits from Queen Victoria, and she rarely went to London or to Kensington. Queen Victoria gave Princess Mary a set of rooms at Kensington Palace when she married Prince Tech in 1866. The rooms were stately and roomy. Princess Mary had hospitality, and when visiting royalty came to visit, that would be an excuse for a grand dinner party. Before the festivities began, Princess Mary would wear a household apron and, with the help of her husband, would put the finishing touches on the floral decorations on the table. The dinner parties were held in the council room, 
and the hospitality, of course, cost money. Local tradespeople were left unpaid, running into four figures. Princess Mary didn't mind asking Queen Victoria for favors, but Queen Victoria would refuse bluntly and often. Queen Victoria was kind-hearted, but she learned how to refuse her cousin's request. One time in 1878, the Duchess of Tech came to Victoria and asked for a loan of $1,200 to keep a creditor at bay. The Queen refused, saying that to help a cousin was set a precedent, and that if it was done once, it would be asked for again and again. So I have to agree with Queen Victoria on that one. <laughs> the family lived at White Lodge, and Princess May slept in a smallish bedroom at the top of the staircase to the right. When she got older, she was allowed a sitting room of her own. Princess Mary let her husband decorate their house, and he would always change out the furniture or change the location of the furniture. And the rooms at White Lodge were filled with flowers. Princess May had a happy but strict upbringing, and May's parents wanted to prepare their children for the real world so that they weren't spoiled. Mary was also warmly affectionate and demonstrative, and she spent a lot of time with their children, which was unusual in those days. She would go to the nursery, and she'd play with them. She would also swing them on the garden swing, and she had tea picnics in the woods nearby, and they would go to pick primroses or bluebells, or they would get blackberries when they were in season. They played cards like Snap, Geographical Lotto, and something called the Egg Game, and sometimes they went to the circus. When May was small, she had been delicate, and it caused anxious moments for her parents. By the age of eight, she was healthy and tall. Queen Victoria, who seemed to tell things as they were, said about May that Mary's boys are splendid, but her girl is very plain. May's mother wrote that her daughter was quick and clever and musical, and May learned French and was learning German. When birthdays came up, they were celebrated richly. Christmas Eve, there were many presents, and they had a tall Christmas tree with lighted candles set in wooden hoops that went around it. Even though Mary's, May's parents were poor, they were charitable, and the Duchess of Tech was determined that Princess May and her brothers should learn of the poor. And at 14, Princess May, she was shy. She was taken to children's parties and to dancing classes, and she found it hard to interact outside her home. Her mom was a hard act to follow with entertaining, and it caused May to be a silent listener and observer. The Duchess at times could be an embarrassment to her teenage daughter. When, I, when May went to Talagoni's dancing classes with the other children, they would giggle when they saw Princess May's mother that needed two gilt chairs, not one to sit on, and May would try to stop embarrassing things that might happen with her mother, and Mary tried to get her daughter out of her shyness by mentioning it in company about her shyness. When Princess May was 13, she tried to hide behind her mother in the procession to the day is in the ballroom, her teeth chattering in fright. Princess May, she could be stubborn, just like Queen Victoria. And Princess May, when she got to know other children well, she became high-spirited and mischievous. Troubles between the Duke and the Duchess. The Duke liked to chain smoke one pipe after another. He liked to shout at his boys, and sometimes he would even yell at the Duchess in front of people, but she maintained dignity throughout it. So this was in the year of 1882, when there were financial worries on the Duke's mind. Months later, Queen Victoria asked them to leave the continent to save money, so they were to go to Florence in exile, and they would also go to see German relations in Germany. So I'm going to end the video at this prospect, and when I started to learn about the royal family, I started to like Queen Mary, and it made me wonder about what her family life was like, and to learn more about her mother especially. It seemed like she was a very loving woman who didn't let her size limit her from being vivacious and fun-loving. She had the respect and the love from the people of London, and they appreciated her personality. I love the video that I did about Queen Elizabeth and her mother, so I thought this would be a good one to do too. Next we'll see how the family fares out of the country in Italy and other places during the time of financial woes. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, it would help me out to see if I'm going in the right direction. I have loved the royal family for many years, and my sister thought that I should do videos about Queen Elizabeth and her family, and so I did. So I love researching about all the members of the family, and it's been fun and a great learning experience for me. And I hope everybody's been having a good day, and tune in again soon for another episode of Queen Elizabeth, A Day in Her Life. Thank you. Bye.